Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on the concept of a process. So till now, most of you all are familiar with the term program. You have to know another term called as process. So basically here, what is the difference between the program and the process that you will be knowing. So what exactly is a process? How do you define a process? Where exactly is the process stored in the system? All these things you will be learning in today's session and also what are the different attributes of a process. Now to make you understand in a simple manner the concept of a process, let us start with program only because a, if, if at all you have to define in simpler words the definition that is the definition for a process, you can simply write a program in execution is called as process. A program in execution. Look at the sentence. The program in execution is called a process. When does a program gets executed? When it is in the main memory. So a program in execution means the program which was there in the secondary memory is now moved into the primary memory that is into the RAM and from there only the CPU is going to access the RAM in order to what in order to execute that program. So we said that program in execution is called as RAM. So now to show you that process we can show first here in the diagram the RAM. Okay. Now your program is residing in where is residing in some secondary memory. I will write in short notation SM stands for secondary memory. So your program is there somewhere here. I will write PRG1. Okay. Now this program for execution will be moved into the primary memory. So that time we will start naming it as process or you can tell in short notation process. So PRG1 becomes what P1. But when does it becomes? PRG1 is written in a high level language by the user. So that program whatever is the program suppose if you are writing a program to greet good morning then you are writing here good morning dot C is the program in written in C language which, which you are writing it in high level language then what is that it has to get converted into the what language which is understandable by the machine. So we call it as the machine language. So that particular program becomes an executable file here. So whatever program you had written here this executable file for good morning dot C I will just write it here as the executable file because this was high level language file and now it has become executable file. So in C language it will be what a dot out file. So this is present in the RAM along with that some more information for that program has to be included in the main memory and th that information is all about the different attributes of that particular process. Now once you have moved this program into an executable file into the RAM from here onwards you will be calling it as a process. So now I can say yes this particular space is address space is meant for the process p1 and this process p1 is going to store what all the different uh, attributes that are required here whether it is variables whether it is um, uh, some uh, so dynamic allocation. So for that reason only what will happen now normally what we have to do is some space you have to keep it as a stack and some space you have to keep it for heap then you have the data part of that program stored fine. So all these things required for the process are getting stored in the main memory and that particular address space you have to call it with the name PCB process control block. So for every process there will be one process control block. If this is P1 if it is for P1 then it will be PCB1 I will write here. I will just try to make it more simpler for you to understand this is the process control block for P1. Similarly there can be one more process control block for P2. So I will write down here PCB2. So you are storing all the static variables, global variables and the different attributes of a process in the process control block. Now you should know what are the different processes, what are the different attributes of a process. The first one will be always for every process, I will just write here for every process a process ID that means an integer number is given by the operating system. 
once a process is created here it will get an identity identity and that identity is called as the process identity it is basically an integer number so some machines are using how many 16 bits some machines are using 32 bits in order to give the integer it is simply like what these attributes if you try to see for a process it is going to give you the complete picture of the process it is simply like the identity card of ours whether if you want you can take for example the aadhar card so in the aadhar card for a person you are normally seeing what a unique number that is the aadhar number then you have the photo for that person you have the address father's name then you have uh, the blood group like that so much of information is stored on that id card aadhar card similarly here also all these attributes are giving the complete what picture of that process that means what are the different uh, things that are required for the process to get executed so these are the different attributes and the first one in the list will be the process id it is there then you have to know the program counter okay what is the value stored in the program counter for the process when it is getting executed so this things you will be learning in detail when i teach you the processes that are preempted processes and non preempted processes so this program counter always holds the value that is the instruction that has to be get that has to get executed next when it holds the processor so what do you mean by that suppose if this is the cpu okay and the process p1 is cpu is allocated to process p1 p1 has started executing some instructions fine it has executed instruction i1 instruction i2 i3 then what has happened is p1 is taken away from the cpu that means cpu is deallocated we say the process p1 is preempted here when p1 is deallocated that means p1 is deallocated for some reason maybe it is requesting for an input output operation so it is deallocated meanwhile another process p2 okay is allocated to cpu when another process p2 is allocated to cpu p2 will execute means the instructions for the pt p, p2 will get executed by the cpu and once again let us assume that p1 is also making a p2 is also making a request for an input output then what what will happen p1 which had already uh, made an input output request has completed so p1 will be what once again given the cpu for execution now p1 first time when it was deallocated it has executed only three instructions let us assume it is having some nine instructions it has executed only three instructions so the next instruction that has to get executed after it gets once again the cpu is what i4 so this particular i4 is stored in the program counter the instruction that has to get executed next will be stored in program counter so that time next when the cpu uh, when the process gets the cpu it will automatically execute not the instruction i3 but i4 because this is the one that is there next in the list so this is the use of the program counter priority are there for the processes higher priority processes will be executed first so in the ram suppose if this is the i'll just tell you here all the processes that are getting executed by cpu are placed here p1 p2 p4 simply randomly i'll write down now this let us assume the ram can accommodate only this five process there is another process p7 which has to get executed but this p7 is having a higher priority that time a process among these five processes which is having the lower priority will be removed so let us take let us assume p4 is having a lower priority it will be removed and p7 will be uh, what accommodated in the ram so priority for a process is assigned by the operating system higher priority processes will be executed first that is the scenario even with us around us now also um, there are many examples one such example you can see uh, whenever you are whenever people try to cross the railway track and if the train is about to come then the people the persons who are there who are about to cross will be made to wait first priority is given for the train to pass and then next what the people the persons are allowed to cross the track even on roads if some vip is traveling on the road the other persons traffic the normal uh, people traffic will be blocked or wait for some time and the first the vips are allowed to pass on to the road so that is because they are having higher priority over the general public 
So that way here also higher priority processes are executed first and normally processes also you have to uh, talk in terms of two types only one is the user processes which are created by the user whereas the other one is what the other one is the system processes system processes have got higher priority over the user processes list of open files and devices when a program gets executed it may require certain files okay to read few files may be just meant for reading the other files <coughs> The, the program may write something into the file. So, care has to be taken before any other process uses that file, that particular updation or it has to be what closed, that file has to be closed before the other process uh, starts writing into it. The updated uh, version of that file should be available for the next process to access. Similar is with the devices, what are the devices that are used during the execution that will be mentioned and some general purpose register values will, will play an important role here. The values of the general purpose registers should be saved. Whatever, suppose if P1 is executing a particular process, okay, particular instruction, P1 is executing a particular instruction I2, for that I2, whatever are the values stored in the general purpose registers, whether it is R1, R2, R3, then those values will be, actually it is holding those values, but when P1 gets preempted and P2 gets once again allocated, okay, the CPU gets allocated to P2, that time the values that are stored in R1, R2 and R3 of P1 should be saved somewhere, okay, so that the next process when it is getting executed, those values will get what will, will be assigned to these general purpose registers. So, the values of the general purpose registers are also important here. Then, so these information, that means the complete requirement for a process to get executed is stored in an address space in the memory and we call it as what? Process control block. So, if, if at all, the process control blocks are like this, for one process up till here, for another process from here to here, okay, and for another PCB3, like this. So, we say this is the process boundary for every process, whatever is there, this is the process boundary for which one? For process P2. Now, a process which is getting executed, okay, will not have what? Will not try to access any other, any other location that is present in another process. That means it will not cross its boundary. So, this is also one of the important aspect. In the previous uh, session I told you know regarding security, here we have to tell use the word as protection. That means all the, uh, this one information about a process that is stored in the PCB for every process is what is protected from other uh, process control blocks. So, this is what is the complete concept of the process. Hope this session is useful to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.